I was sick. I'm sorry. Happy Tuesday, Potterheads. I am back after having to take a week off. I had a cold that really knocked me on my ass, but I am healthy again. <laughs> <coughs> this week we're talking about chapter two of Chamber of Secrets and speculating wildly about how much Dobby actually knows. But first, let's go to the recap. Harry is surprised to find Dobby, a house elf, in his bedroom. Harry says some polite stuff to Dobby which makes him cry because he's never known kindness. Dobby explains that he's bound to serve one family for life unless they set him free, and if he speaks ill of his family in any way he has to punish himself. Then Dobby tells Harry he can't go back to Hogwarts. Uncle Vernon comes upstairs to yell at Harry for all the commotion, then Dobby lets slip that he's been stopping all of Harry's mail all summer to make him think he had no friends. Harry refuses to listen to Dobby's warning, so Dobby smashes the dessert Petunia had made for their guests, then he vanishes. Harry gets a letter of warning from the Ministry of Magic, and the Dursleys learn he's not allowed to use magic outside school. So they lock Harry up in his room with bars on his window and only a cat flap to give him barely any food. Then Harry wakes up one night to find Ron staring at him through his window. Thanks, Recap! If you guys have other ideas that you'd like to see for our recaps, please leave them below in the comments. And if you're new here, welcome! Please consider subscribing so that you don't miss a single chapter as we read Chamber of Secrets. And after you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you always know when a new video is uploaded. And then go all the way back and check out the playlist in the link in the description to watch all of book one. And now back to the topic. Dobby sure is a precocious little house elf. I think we can all agree that Dobby is one of the more helpful characters throughout Harry's journey. I mean, without Dobby, things would have gone very differently in book seven at Malfoy Manor. <laughs> I think it gets mentioned enough that Dobby is an amazing spy. He's like the Severus Snape of house elves, except without the evil part, or the, the bullying, or the greasy hair. And there's a small moment in this chapter that really got me wondering, how much does Dobby know here? Okay, so we've all read the book, we've seen the movie, we know the danger that lies ahead for Harry in this year. We know why Dobby doesn't want Harry to go back to school. Voldemort has another nefarious plan to come back in a full body, and he uses this and Lucius Malfoy and Ginny Weasley to try to kill Harry again. And what we learn at the end of the book is that Dobby belongs to the Malfoy family. I mean, at least he does right before the whole Dobby is free thing. Now, I'm not just talking about surface level knowledge here. Obviously, Dobby knows that there is a dangerous plan that the Malfoys are a part of to kill Harry. I'm wondering how much detail Dobby knows about those plans. Specifically, does he know that the diary is a horcrux? Sashi. I think yes. I just got a feeling that good old Lucius Malfoy is a little loose-lipped when he's at home. That man is so obsessed with his image. I just imagine him at home waltzing around constantly boasting about how much the Dark Lord loves him and how much he has plans for him. Lucius is seriously the worst. And honestly, I don't doubt that Voldemort would tell those people that he trusted enough to guard his horcruxes what they actually were. I've had some discussions in the past with people about whether or not Lucius actually knew what the diary was, but now I'm sure that he did. I mean, in book seven, when Bellatrix thinks that someone has stolen the Horcrux from her Gringotts vault, she goes absolutely bonkers and starts killing people left and right. So I have to imagine that Voldemort was like, um, so hey you guys, these things are like part of my soul, so if you could just be really careful with them, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks. And Lucius knowing this, oh my god, I bet that was all he ever talked about at home. Oh, Voldemort trusted me with his Horcrux. He trusted me with his soul. He loves me the most. Dude's the worst. But this is isn't just speculation on my part, although we do all know that I love to make wild guesses about the books. But on page 17, there's a conversation that goes a little something like this. Harry is asking Dobby what he means and if Voldemort is coming back to get him this year. And Dobby says, Not he who must not be named, sir. And Harry's like, Ah, it's chill. Dumbledore will protect me. And then the chapter says this. Dobby has heard Dumbledore's powers rival those of he who must not be named at the height of his strength. But sir, Dobby's voice dropped to an urgent whisper. There are powers Dumbledore doesn't. Powers no decent wizard. Boom! And then the chapter shifts abruptly to Dobby beating himself up again. I can't imagine anything else that Dobby could be referring to here. The only impressive, powerful magic that we know Voldemort is ultimately able to pull off that Dumbledore won't even go near is creating a horcrux. And we learn that it is one of the absolute darkest forms of magic that there is. Dobby says it directly. Voldemort has powers no decent wizard would even consider trying. Dobby clearly knows that Tom Riddle's diary 
is a horcrux that will be returned to Hogwarts, will drain the life of a student there, and then Tom Riddle would use his full strength to sick the basilisk on the school. And that pretty much settles it for me about whether or not Voldemort told people about his horcruxes. And honestly, I think he made a big mistake by letting that information be known to anyone. Like, he didn't have to tell anyone, and then it would have been way safer if no one just knew about them. But hey, his downfall is his to choose. Lucius should have been way more careful with this information. There's a great quote from The Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare that Lucius could have afforded to pay more attention to. In that play, Baptista says, Not in my house, Lucentio, for as you know, pitchers have ears, and I have many servants. Essentially, servants are always listening, so be careful what you say. Not that it would have made much difference if Dobby had never tried to stop Harry. Well, I mean, if Dobby had never learned about this plot, then he never would have made a friendship with Harry, and Harry would never have set him free at the end of the book, and then it would become increasingly unlikely that Dobby would have saved Harry's life at the end of book seven, and then Voldemort would have just come to Malfoy Manor and killed him there before he could destroy all the horcruxes. And Anyway, moral of the story, if you're super rich, don't go blabbing to anyone and everyone about your evil plans. And that's it for today's topic. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And now it's time for parenting with... Hey, Carter. Dobby is essentially trying to act as a caretaker for Harry in this chapter, right? Like a parent, he has great concern for Harry's safety, so his instinct is to do whatever he can to keep Harry safe. But I think Dobby, like it seems most of the parents in these books do, takes things to an extreme. By trying to completely cut Harry off from the rest of the wizarding world, he is meddling in things he doesn't understand. Dobby is not an agent of Dumbledore's. He doesn't know how important it is that Harry becomes learned in the magical arts. But, like some parents, Dobby sees danger and thinks it's best to shelter Harry from it all rather than letting him grow and learn and strengthen himself to confront it. And that's a struggle I've really faced so far as a parent. I'm terrified of all that could happen to Margot. The first few times we took her to a playground, I was totally helicoptered. But I have to let her play. I have to let her learn. I have to let her approach danger and learn that she can take care of herself. I don't want to raise a child who is scared to go outside by herself. I don't want Margot to think that she has to be afraid of the world. I just want her to be strong and confident and make sure that she has enough skills so that she can keep herself safe. And that's all for Parenting With... In lieu of a question this week, I want to point out one more thing that I noticed in this chapter. I'm noticing a recurring thing happening at the end of both of the chapters we've read so far, and that has to do with eyes. Toward the end of the first chapter, Harry saw a pair of eyes staring at him from a bush. At the end of this chapter, he sees another pair of eyes goggling at him from his bedroom window. Now, we all know that eyes are going to become important later in the book with all the basilisk business. <laughs> And that is where my video cut out. I have absolutely no idea what happened. Um, it seems like my phone just sort of screwed up with the recording. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Basically, keep an eye out for places in the coming chapters where J.K. Rowling foreshadows the whole eyes thing. Um, and read chapter three by next Tuesday. It's the Burrow. We will be talking about opposites and comparisons and how J.K. Rowling uses those to show transition in the chapter. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Sometimes this happens. Thanks, guys. I will see you next Tuesday. Knox. Knox.